this video I'm going to show you how you can build a simple counter where you can count up, count down and also reset back to zero. Now this is just going to be some beginner JavaScript, it's a new series I'm doing on the channel where I just progressively do more and more advanced tutorials starting off with something super easy like a beginner JavaScript counter. Now in this I'm going to be going over the JavaScript. I expect you to already know how to do some HTML and CSS because um, I won't really be covering the styling or the uh, HTML. I'll be going over some HTML element elements that um, revolve around the actual JavaScript side, uh, but we're going to be sticking to the basics. So here we are, this is what we're building again. So you can count up, you can count up as much as you want, let's say 30, we can decrease it. Great for if you're counting your strokes in golf, because you know me, I'd be up here in the 35 strokes per hole, because I am god awful at it. But we have a reset button and a decrease when we want to cheat our way through. So now we've got this, let's actually get over there and start coding. Okay guys, you can support the channel by heading over to my Ko-Fi, the link is down below in the description and you can get access to the source code for this project in the shop. You can also become a member and get a 99% discount on anything in the shop. So far there's only one source code but as I do more videos there'll be more. So if you become a uh, an apprentice on the membership you will be able to get support the channel behind the scenes code and also get access to source code at a 99% discount. So guys go check that out if you want the source code and let's get on with the video. Okay guys so in here you can see we have a simple HTML file. Now I'm going to go over the basics so far we have a main CSS linked in it's over here I'll go over that in a second. We also have a JavaScript file we're linking but we currently don't actually have that JavaScript file so let's create a new file I'm going to call main.js and for now we can just log in here. We can do a console.log and we can just say ready. Uh, and then we could test that in a second. Now inside of here we have a wrapper diff that's containing everything and the CSS is centering all of this to the middle. We then have a counter which is basically just our number which um, we will be incrementing or de uh, decreasing the number inside of JavaScript. We also have the actions. Now in the actions we have three different buttons. All of them have a class of button so we can easily target them. They all have their own color. This is just for visual effect. And then we have this data action and an action inside. Now this is the important part. Um, so inside of our button we have the data action. Now data actions or data attributes allow you to get information into JavaScript from the DOM. So in here we can say data action decrease so when we click this button we can find this action and find what you want to do with this button and then we can do that inside of JavaScript. Um, and then we've got a data action for reset and a data action for increase. So that is the uh, HTML side of things. Now inside the CSS we reset everything. I set the wrapper to 100% screen and I use flex to center everything. We then have our counter with a big font size, font weight and a margin bottom. And then in our actions we use flex again with a little bit of a gap between each button. And then our buttons are down here. So we have buttons, inline blocks with a medium font size, 20 pixels, font weight, uppercase, border radius and padding. Again, styling doesn't matter for the actual functionality or the JavaScript side of this. And we also have buttons of amber. Now, if you want to get this code, as I said, you can get it on Ko-Fi um, in the shop or you can become a member and get a 99% discount. Also, we can head over to our main.js and get started with the actual code. So let's first thing first, I'm going to use something called um, MPX or NPM to actually run uh, a live server. Now you can just go into HTML in your folder, open this up in File Explorer or if you're on Mac in Finder, double click this and it will show here. You can see the buttons don't currently work. If we press F12, you can see the JavaScript still does work though. It has the ready calls there. But for to make this a bit easier, I'm going to run this on a local server. This just helps me, uh, well, it just, just helps. Uh, and I'm going to say live surfer and I'm just going to press dot here and that should run me a nice little surfer. There we go. You can see that. And now here we go. If we press F12, we have the ready being launched by JavaScript as well. Perfect. So now in here, what we're going to do is we're going to delete the ready 
and we are first going to get reference to our counter. So we want to get reference to this counter here. Now, to do that in JavaScript, we're going to create a constant variable. Now, variables are just ways of identifying pieces of code inside of your JavaScript. So a constant is a uh, non-changeable uh, value. So in here, we can say document. Now, the document respond, uh, is basically the whole HTML or, jar or the DOM element you'll be hearing a lot of this if it confuses you feel free to google it or give me a shout in the comments and i'll try my best to explain it a bit better now we can use something called query selector query selector allows you to search for stuff inside of your body so to search for something in there we can say query selector and we can pass in a string so if you're used to css syntax you know we select things by doing the dot notation now we can do the exact same thing by actually going into here and doing a dot notation so we can say dot counter and that's going to find the first element in the dom so it's going to go down the dom and find the first element with the class of counter and that is going to be applied to this javascript we can then get reference to our buttons now we're going to get an array of our buttons which an array is a list of all the things you are obviously putting in that array now we're going to use the same thing theory dot query selector but to get every single element with the same class we're going to say all query selector all and then we're going to say dot button this will get us all our buttons in an array now to show you this array i'm going to do a console log now console log just logs as i showed earlier into our um console here and if we refresh you can see node.js is up here and you can see if we hover over these it actually shows us each button in the dom as you can see, we have a node list with our buttons that are applied here. Perfect. So back in our code, we want to actually set our counter to a default number. So we're going to say counter dot inner text, and we're going to set this to our count. Now we don't have a count variable. We're going to create a let variable this time. Now a let variable allows you to actually change the variable so instead of just being zero zero we can make change this later on in the code for example we can say count is now equal to five and with setting the inner text so we're going to set the contents of this diff into whatever this value is of counter so now you can see we have count we've set it to zero and now we're going to set it to five actually to show you something better, i'm going to set it to one first go back to this you can see it's now set this number here is now one and if we now change it to count equal five after, so we've set it to one and now we're changing it to five, you can see it's now five. Now, if we try to change, let's say counter, if we go counter equal to 10, for example, because currently we've set it to this, we're going to get an error saying assignment constant variable because you're not allowed to reassign the value you set to a const variable. Now let's delete this and just set this to zero. So we get a default number. Now, if you want to set, start this at any specific number, you can change this and that will change it. But we're going to set it to zero. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to loop through an array. So we have an array up here, as I showed you. Now to loop through this, to go through each individual item, we can use a for loop. Now to do a for loop, you do the same syntax I'm doing here. So we're going to say let i is equal to zero. And then it's i is less than sign. And we're going to say buttons dot length. So this will get us the length of the array. So if there's three items in this array, this will bring back three items. And then we can say i plus plus. So what this will do is we will set our i to zero and along is the i is less than zero or sorry less than the length of the array which is three we're going to increase the thing and then run this code so for the first one it's going to be zero so i on the first way around i will be equal to zero when it goes around a second time it'll be one and two and then it will stop because we'll check if it gets to three this code will not run because i will no longer be less than the length so let's just get a constant called button or just btn for sure and we can say buttons i so what we're doing here is we are getting our buttons array and then we're finding the number which is set to zero for the first one so we'll get the first element in the array and store it here we then want to say button dot add event listener and we are going to just say click and then I'm going to use an arrow function here. So this event listener, so an event listener is an event that happens in the DOM. Um, so for example, clicking, scrolling, you can search for all of those sort of things here, but we're going to search for just a click. So when you click a button, 
we're going to do an arrow notation. So this is a function block here. Um, and this is just saying once you click, we're going to do this function. Now in here, we're actually going to get the const of action. Or we can actually set this to be even more simple and set it to a function called handle action. So this will now call this function here. So to do this, we're going to say function, and we're going to say handle action, and we're going to pass in the event. So I'm going to say event. And to get this, we're going to say event, or sorry, we're going to get the action. So we're going to say const action is equal to event, or EVT, as I named it, dot target. Now the target is what we clicked. So here we've clicked something, it's going to be the button and that's going to be the target. And now to get the data attributes we sent, we need each one of these actions. We just need to say data set dot and then we need to give it the name we put after the hyphen, which is action. So we can put action here. Now you can actually write anything you want here. You could have like test or cheese. And as long as you put here, for example, data action cheese, this will get that data attribute. But for now, we're just going to keep it at action because it makes more sense than cheese. Now, normally in this case, I would create a switch statement. But for the focus of this, I'm going to show you how if statements work. So if statements take a condition. So we have an if and then a condition. We can say if the action is equal equal so this will say if it's equal to and we can now check if it's equal to increase then we can run some functions to do increasing we can then say else if and we can say the action is equal to decrease then we can do some decreasing and then we can do another else if so we check if this doesn't come true then it will try this one if this doesn't come true it will then try this one and we'll reset this and then in here, we can say count is equal to zero. We can then say in this one, so in the reset, we just want to set it to zero. In the increase, we want to say count is plus equal to. So this will add whatever we put behind here. And we're going to say one. But there's actually a better way to write this. We can actually just say count plus plus because this will just add one to whatever the value of count is. And this will add whatever number. So in here, you could add extra numbers and it would go up by two. We're just going to leave that like that for now. And then in the decrease, we can do count. Oh, count is minus equal to one instead. However, once again, there's an easier way to do it. We can say count minus minus, which will minus one from the value. Now, we just need to copy this code here and redo it at, oh, at the bottom here. And this should now work. So what we're doing here is we're just we're going to change the count and then we're going to rechange the t name anytime we click on a button. So if we go back to our code and we click increase, you can see we can increase the number, we can decrease it and we can reset. Now I'm going to give you a bonus task and that is to do increments of 10. So create a new button that does increments of 10 and not just one. So that could be just a button in the DOM called increase 10. And then you can actually go and attempt that in the code. So guys, that's it for this first episode or lesson. Hopefully it wasn't too slow paced. Now, please let me know what you guys think of this video. This is first time I've done this sort of format where I'm going as beginner friendly as I can possibly think of. I know I'm not amazing at doing beginner friendly content, um, but I try to explain things as best I can. If anything wasn't explained well enough, please just let me know in the comments. Or if I'm explaining too much, then please let me know in the comments and I will try and find a balance to work which works for everyone. For those veterans of JavaScript, if you got to the end of this video, that would have must have been quite painful. I do admit this isn't how I normally would write the code, so do not worry. I will be doing some more advanced tutorials later on and trying to get more into that sort of thing. But first, hopefully, this gives you a good understanding of how you can get an element in the DOM, manipulate the DOM by changing the text inside, and then also looping through arrays of different things and running function inside of here. So guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you managed to learn something new. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video. And if you want access to the source code, don't forget to head to the link down below, Ko-Fi, support the channel, and get access to source code. Thank you very much. I will see you in the next one. Peace out.